go. Ready? Okay, sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Today with me, as always, Hi, is the man behind the curtain. He's the editor, the cameraman, the director, and the tech guy. And he's also my husband, Bill Gortimer. And good afternoon from the East Coast of the United States. Good morning if you're on the West Coast. And good evening to our UK and Canada audience. So today we're talking about cooking for picky eaters. But first, we're going to have a cocktail because it's Let's Celebrate TV after all. Today I'm making an old favorite of ours. We're having the grapefruit jasmine. So let me put on my spectacles, get my recipe here so I can make it correctly for you. There we go. In my glass, we're going to start with some gin. You know, our favorite thing. I just need three ounces. Glug, glug, glug. Next up is freshly squeezed lemon juice, an ounce and a half. I'm gonna make a little tangy. Here's my lemon juice. Next up is Campari. Now this is Campari. This is an Italian liqueur. It's very bitter, but it's delicious. And once you learn to appreciate that bitterness, you will find it has a lot more notes than just the bitter. So I need just an half an ounce of that. Let me actually use this little one to measure that. All right. Nice color so far. And then finally, to make it a grapefruit jasmine, we're using a grapefruit liqueur called Pomplemousse. And again, we need three quarters of an ounce of that. Yeah, close enough. All right, now it's time for the shaky shaky. In my shaker full of ice. And here we go. All right. Now while that defoams for a moment, let's get the glasses. Got a couple of glasses here. These are called coupes. They're used for champagne or martinis. And I just had them chilling with some ice and water in them. I want to garnish this first. And I have here some grapefruit segments. Now you'll notice there's no pith or skin or anything on these segments. And this is called a supreme. This is a technique to get grapefruit or any type of citrus like this. And we're actually going to do a basic skills episode on how to supreme citrus. Makes things a little classier for these uh, drinks and things. All right. Let's do a double strain so we're not having little ice chips. Nice. Well, that one's a little short, but I'll give that one to Phil because he's driving and I'm not. He's driving all the tech stuff anyway. Now we're just going to put in a nice wadge of grapefruit, or you could put it on the side if you were feeling especially fancy like that. All right, Philip, are you ready? Sure. Let's get rid of this stuff. Here you go. Oh, okay, I get yes, the small one. You get the small one. Right. You're, and you're the driving link this. To this uh, cocktail is in the mm -hmm. description with the video. Yep. Cheers. And cheers. Happy birthday to my big sister Heather if you're watching. Cheers to you. That's good. You want more grapefruit? I want more grapefruit. Okay. Mm. This is nice. It's bright. It's tart. There's that bitterness as a background, but it's very grapefruity. Not sweet like you might think it is. 
All right, so let me get some notes out because we're talking all about cooking for picky eaters today. Or while we do that, yes, I'm dear. Switch my screens. All right, let's see who's in chat today. Oh yes, yes, yes. Again, if you're in chat, let us know where you're from. Hopefully, in a couple of weeks, we have a new feature that's gonna pick you out on the map, so we can show where everybody's coming from. Oh, I didn't if know we had If you've got that. any questions, let us know. We'll answer them live. So let's see if our regulars are here. All right. I know we, there were some people waiting. Yep. Hank, well, here it is, an early spring in Phoenix at 71 degrees, and all the visitors arriving for Super Bowl 57, Sunday, February 12th. Looking forward to today to see what I can add to my picky eaters list. <laughs> <laughs> see, I told you we should have cooked something today. Well, that's okay, Hank. We'll have some tips for you. I know, you don't like grapefruit or lima beans, Kevin, I know. Yeah, but so, look, yes, you can have a Manhattan, or you could have a beer from the Cakerator that we bought you. <laughs> That's okay, Dixie. Oh, here we go. Hey, Jack and Paul, good to see you. Yeah, grapefruit is not for everyone's taste, so I'm kind of glad I made this. Hi, Paul, hi, Jack, hi, Dixie. Um, but this, we make another grapefruit martini that's actually sweeter. It's almost like a Cosmos, but this is a little more grown up and an acquired taste. Well, really. it's got a, yeah, it's got a Not bitter background. Everyone. Yeah. So if you like Campari, you would like this. If you don't like Camparis or things made with Campari, this might not be up your. Okay, alley. so I think Dixie is going to be setting the tone for this. Are you ready? Sure. Would someone that only eats chicken or turkey be considered a picky eater? I think so. <laughs> Does well, it rhyme with pill? Yes. <laughs> How do we even approach that? <laughs> so for those of you not know, Dixie's husband, Phil, really eats chicken and turkey. And he's a great that's friend of ours. We yeah. love them both. So that's why we feature so many chicken recipes, because I've made it my mission. Because as Dixie says, they cluck their way through life. So I have made it one of my missions to find new interesting things to do with chicken. See, a lot of people wonder, where does picky eater, where, where does it start? How does it come from? What, what causes someone to be a picky eater? And, you know, really there's lots of causes. Sometimes some people say it's, it's environment, it's nurture over nature, uh, but there's a little more to it. Um, Sure, kids go through picky eater stages as they're growing and learning. Like our granddaughter, our one granddaughter, Mackenzie, um, she's slowly learning to like things and she's doing a really good job at it. She's willing to try things. But, you know, a lot of people, it, it runs in families. And, you know, it's funny that when mom and dads are surprised uh, because, you know, if mom says yuck to broccoli, then their kid turns around and says yuck to broccoli. It's, they're surprised by that. And, you know, well, they're learning that from you, so give it a try. Um, but lots of other causes. Oh, here's interesting. What? What, what? My kids are not the fussy eaters. It is my wife. The kids don't get much exposure to new foods. Well, yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, that's an easy thing to do to get caught in that we eat the same five things over and over again, and some people make it their way of life, which I feel bad for people like that because they're missing out on so much, and if they're not even willing to try, yeah, it's sad. Now, I have one of my nieces, my oldest niece. Um, yes, dear, I know. Look at the camera. I know, but I'm talking to you, too. <laughs> so stop doing this at me. One of my, uh, my oldest niece, when she was a little girl, Thank you. She would only eat french fries and hot dogs. Now, this is like chicken McNuggets weren't even a thing yet. This is how old she is um, and how old I am. But she would only eat hot dogs and french fries, and that was it. And she, as a little little girl, was having health problems from it because that's all she existed on. And her mother would just say, okay, whatever you want. You don't, you don't want this. So the first time she went and stayed at my parents' house, um, her mother, my sister-in-law, gave my mom a whole list of instructions. You know, this is what she eats. I said, Janine only eats this and only that and blah, 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 blah. And my mom's like, yeah, okay, whatever, and threw it out. She'll eat what we feed her. And, you know, my mom, having raised five kids, had a way with kids. And by the end of the weekend, Janine was trying new things and liking new things because her mother never said no to her. So she never 
had to try or was even allowed to try anything new. But there's lots of other causes, and I, I was doing a lot of research the other day, um, and there's like some scientists and doctors, they just can't agree on what really causes someone to be a picky eater. My dad was strict with dinner. You had to eat it or you went to bed. I went to bed a lot. Well, that's one approach. And, you know, uh, when I was growing up, you had to try everything. You had to have a bite of it. So if you didn't like asparagus, you had to eat one ear of asparagus or one spear, um, whatever it was. Perhaps Phil needs to try pink chicken. <laughs> so, uh, Dixie, Kevin is referring to uh, their daughter, Mackenzie, uh, like salmon, but she calls it pink chicken, so they call it pink chicken because it makes her want to eat it. So maybe you can try that with your Phil. My Phil loves salmon, so. <laughs> but no, there are lots of other uh, causes, and some of the most common things were, you know, when you have a limited expo exposure to other foods, you know, when mom and dad only eat the same five things, or you as a grown-up just get caught up into, you know, Monday nights, Burger night and Tuesday night is pizza night and this is all I eat and this is all I want to eat. But there's other things, like there are people out there who are hyper tasters, so they're hypersensitive to certain tastes and certain smells. Um, my mother was like that to a point. You could put the tiniest piece of fresh basil in something and not tell her and she'd be like, you put basil in this, I can taste it. It's like, how? You, you smoke like two packs a day, how do you taste that basil? But okay. Um, but because of that, because people have hypersensitivity, uh, some of the articles, the, the research leads the scientists to believe that it makes them resistant because if something is a little bit sour to you or me, it's super, super sour to them. So they don't want, they don't want lemons, they don't want limes, they don't want whatever it is. Another thing is there are eating disorders uh, that cause people to be really picky eaters, um, but it's also things like they believe anxiety, people on the autism spectrum, but even stress, um, especially as an adult, uh, can make you be a more picky eater at times. So that there's lots of underlying causes. And it's kind of fascinating. Now, of course, there are different types of picky eating. Um, you know, when I think of a picky eater, I think of someone who, I only eat five things like my niece used to be. She would eat hot dogs and french fries. Yes, let us know where you're from. Um, didn't we see that already? Or I know that, but we have new people coming in. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome, new people. But there are people who are very specific about their picky eating. There are people who will say, no fish, no fish whatsoever. I can't even think about eating fish or no greens. Uh, some people think lima beans are fuzzy, Kevin. Oh, there you go. No fish from Jerry. There are a lot of people out there who are just afraid to try new foods. And that, that just breaks my little heart when people don't want to try new foods. Well, he'll eat fish. I'm the picky eater when it comes to fish. That's okay. So we're, we're going to talk about how, how to overcome some of that. Um, and some advice I need to follow sometimes, too. I'm not a picky eater, but there are some things that I struggle with. I mean, clearly, I'm not a picky eater. From AJ, I was a picky eater as a kid, but I grew out of it, except for liver. Okay, that's fair. Um, I think I have not had liver in probably about 20 years. When I want it, I'll eat it, but it's not my first choice of things, which my poor husband loves liver, and I never buy it for him or cook it for him. He'll get it if we go to a diner sometimes, but... Eh, just not my first choice. And there's, I think there's a difference between being a picky eater and just not caring for something. You know, there, there's that balance there. So sometimes for people, it's a texture thing. It's an odor thing. Um, like I said, some people think lima beans are fuzzy. Some people think unless eggs are cooked super hard that they're slimy and icky. Um, Things like that. Some people, you know, you even think about cooking cabbage and they're turning green and complaining like, no, 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 that's going to ruin everything. Uh, that's why a lot of people don't like Brussels sprouts because they can be strong, have a strong smell when they are cooked. So a lot of people won't eat them. 
and won't eat anything like them. From Carol, when I was a kid, I never figured out that asparagus equals stinky pee. Oh, hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As an adult, I won't eat it. Um, yeah, actually, that's, that's one of those things that it's kind of like cilantro. A lot of people think cilantro tastes like soap. Um, and that's because they have a gene or something that makes them taste it that way. And I think it's the same way from what I've read with asparagus is you get that effect if you have certain genes or something. And not everyone gets it. Um, but, you know, how do we overcome being a picky eater? Or how do you get your kids to overcome it? Or worse, how do you get an adult to overcome being a picky eater? It's challenging because grown-ups, you know, we're settled into our lifelong habits. What? Oh, you're you're going to say something. Mm -mm. Oh. Mom has to eat veggies by introducing them raw at first, next time cook, next time with a sauce from Bobby. I've heard of that, and uh, my only caution with that is, is I used to work with a lady who did that with her kids. Her kids wouldn't eat broccoli, so she started putting cheese sauce on it, and then she had to start putting cheese sauce on everything, and it wasn't the vegetables the kids wanted. They wanted the salty cheese sauce made in Velveeta, so... Uh, you got to kind of watch that. So I, I found a very interesting article about can someone overcome picky eating? And there's lots of advice, so I picked out the top five. And the first thing is, don't give up after trying something once. And that's true. When I was growing up, I didn't like asparagus. But whenever my mom cooked it, I had to eat one piece of asparagus. And... I didn't really care to it. Oh, I think most moms had the you have to take one bite rule. Yeah, I would hope that they would because kids don't know what they don't like. They just think they don't like it. But I was, I didn't like asparagus until I was probably in my 30s. But I liked it because my mom kept at me my whole life. I always had to have a bite. And what made me like it is I learned how to roast it because my mom would always boil it. So it was mushy and bitter and just not good because she thought you had to cook it to death. Uh, and then when the whole roasting vegetable phrase, phase or craze started, I thought, well, let me try it. It looks good on TV. And if Ina Garten can roast asparagus, maybe I'll like it. So I Isn't made that it. shades of shrimp boiled for 45 minutes? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Let's not go down that story again. But yeah, so don't give up trying something. Try it in more than once. Keep trying it. Now, you know, if you really don't like asparagus and it's expensive, then no, don't uh, buy a whole pound of asparagus if you're on your own. But maybe if you have a family and your family likes it, cook it for them, but then you try a piece every single time. Whatever it is, asparagus or whatever. The other thing, next one is, try it again, but try a different preparation, which is what I did with asparagus. I like it roasted. I don't like it boiled, um, but roasted, stir-fried, raw, sure, I love it now. I was the same way with Swiss cheese. I didn't eat Swiss cheese. I thought it was too smelly. I would eat it, <laughs> and a lot of kids are like this. I would eat it at my grandmother's house if she made it a Reuben, because it was in a Reuben. I like that. Um, but it wasn't until I was uh, in my first job in a sandwich shop in Delhi, and I was slicing Swiss cheese all the time. And at first it was like, you know, the smell. But then I got used to it, and then I thought, this is kind of nice, and I had to start cooking with it, because sometimes people would want Swiss cheese on their sandwiches, and it just kind of got me liking it. So try your same foods. Try that one food you really don't like, or whatever all the food is. So Dixie, if you don't like fish, try different fish cooked in different ways, right? I had not started to be a fussy eater until I went to college and had to make my own meals. Yeah, uh, college kids are kind of like that, I think. When they get out on their own, they don't know what to do, and uh, they fall into that, okay, I can afford ramen, and I don't like the food that the school cafeteria has. <laughs> anyway, next tip is, this is kind of an unusual one. When you're trying new foods or trying to break yourself of being a picky eater, be in a comfortable environment. And the whole article was saying that people get very anxious and, and, and suffer a lot of stress and anxiety when they 
like go out to a restaurant or to someone else's house because they only like certain things. Um, so they, they feel like they, they don't want to go out to dinner because what if they don't have anything I don't like? So introduce new things, but do it at home, right? Where you're comfortable, um, where you don't have to worry about being embarrassed or someone shaming you because you don't like something. Um, next thing is don't rush it. It takes time. You've had a lifetime of not liking something or uh, either it be a certain food or a category of food, whatever it is, but don't rush it. You're not going to change overnight. And, and that's true in so many aspects of our lives. You know, you hear like with weight loss, you know, do this program and you'll lose 100 pounds in a week. Well, that's not going to happen. You know that. Uh, but it takes time to maybe change your palate, change your habits, change your way of thinking. Uh, you might surprise yourself and you know don't beat yourself up okay I don't like eggs I'm gonna try egg and I don't like them still don't like them I'm gonna try them again cooked this way still don't like them Paul says I'm not a salmon lover but made your salmon wrap with prosciutto and it was fantastic thank you that makes that makes me so happy thank you Paul I'm glad you like it that's a great recipe and you know that's a perfect example that uh, if you're a little creative, if you don't think you like something, or you, you say, you know, I don't like salmon, but maybe I'll try it this way with a little prosciutto, a nice little salsa on it, jazz it up, and all of a sudden you, you, you like salmon. At least cook that way, and that's okay. The other thing, one more tip, have fun with it, right? Why not have fun? Cooking, we have to eat. And if you're going to eat, you might as well have fun. And cooking and eating should be joyful, I think, anyway. Um, so have fun. Have like Tasting Tuesday or New Food Friday, where like well, maybe once a week you have something new and different and something completely off the wall that you may not have. Now maybe it's something you want to try, so you order it and have it delivered. Uh, that's what I do a lot when I, uh, if there's something I, I want to try, I'll wait until I go out. Um, and then I'll have it in a restaurant. And there's two reasons, and this is something I know about myself. If I'm out, my public manners are going to kick in that I was raised with, and I'm going to eat whatever I've ordered because you're in public. Don't make a scene. Just eat it. The other thing is I'm paying for it now, and I know that someone made went through all the trouble to make it, so I'm going to eat it even if I don't like it. But 99 times out of 100, when I do that, I end up liking it, and then I figure out, how can I make this at home? From Kelly, my brother eats everything but it has to be separated on the plate, nothing touching. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people are like that. I think it has a name and I, I don't recall it. I, that was something I was reading about uh, the other day and all the stuff I was reading. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of people like that and that's especially troublesome for them like at Thanksgiving or the holidays when they're doing a buffet and they're like, no, the cranberry can't touch that and they have all these little piles. I have somebody in my company that when he goes down for lunch, he takes down four bowls and everything goes in a different bowl. Mm -hmm. That's why those uh, cafeteria trays are good. The ones with all little sections in them. So you can have your mashed potatoes here and they won't be touching your peas and carrots there. I don't eat anything on a bone. No wings, ribs, chops, yuck from Robin. You know, I know someone else like that. Someone I work with is like that too. And it's funny. Um, she was always like that and she said it was a real issue with her and her husband when they were first married because he loved ribs and wings and when she got pregnant with their first child she started craving wings and ribs and now she eats stuff on the bone but she was she couldn't believe that why do I want ribs I hate ribs are on a bone it's gross and you have to take the meat off and, uh, and she just got a craving for wings and ribs and she got over it finally uh, but that's one of those strange things that, that people are, are grossed out, like, ugh, on a bone. But Hank says, collard greens are a big no with me. It's about the only thing I will not eat. Do you know, um, okay. Are you okay with other greens, though? That's kind of interesting. And, and what's different about collards than other greens? I know you have to cook them a lot longer because they're a little tougher. Um, but yeah, sometimes we, we have that one or two things. That, that's your personal kryptonite. I don't know that I would call that a uh, picky eater, but, you know, I don't eat things with strong smells like cabbage. It just turns my stomach. And that's a big trigger for a lot of people who are 
picky eaters or fussy eaters, when they smell certain things, they just forget it and they won't eat anything. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. This one's funny. Uh oh. Hold on. <laughs> If it looks slimy on the outside, it is not going inside. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess no oysters on half shell for you, Beth. Which would be, you know, no one wants fish. <clears throat> it's the smell when cooking. Okay, so yeah, a lot, and a lot of people have that. that it, the smell, if it's the textures. Uh, but there are people out there, so many people who are just like, I eat five things. That's it which is sad. My mom never made me try new food. If I said I didn't like it, she would make me something else. Earl, well, okay, good for your mom. My mom would not have done that. You always had to try it. Um, you know, which we kids would always fuss about, like, my dad wouldn't eat beets. Why doesn't dad have to eat beets and we have to eat beets? And so, he's your father. He doesn't have to. Okay. I believe preparation makes a difference in liking something. We notice that while getting Mackenzie to try new things. Yes, absolutely it does, Kevin. Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, like when I was growing up, and probably many of you out there, what did mom do? She boiled her vegetables, stunk up the house. They were mushy and gray and bleh. Um, and then you start cooking them differently as an adult, and you realize, oh, maybe this is pretty good. And that's, I think, often a key is preparing something differently than what you're normally used to. And if you hear them, that's Tucker meowing. There are a couple cats here. We have uh, Maxwell, the new cat, is over on the couch next to me, and he has a cold, so he's sneezing. And then Tucker wants to be fed, and so he's coming through singing his song of woe. All right, what else you got, dear? Uh, hold on. And we're not featuring a channel this week. We are not, and I'll talk uh -oh. about that in a little bit. Okay. So food has to look good. I don't like piles of stuff like squash or baked beans. Well, and you know, that's true. And that's very off-putting for people. Uh, and that's why as a cook, and like that was one of the first things we learned in school, the feast begins with the eyes. You eat with your eyes first. If it looks beautiful coming out, you're going to go, oh, that looks great. But if you've just got some random piles, it looks like the dog's dinner, like, ugh. I can understand that. Yes, Tucker. Yes, I know. Daddy's on TV right now. I'll feed you when we're done. Language. <laughs> yes, Tucker. Well, here, come here. Good... Come here. Come here. Come here. Here he is. Here's our old man, Tucker. He's, what is he? 16? 17. 17? Yeah. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. And disengage your claw. I know. You're caught. All right. All right. I'll put you down. Boom. All right, this one coming up is pretty good because we know our middle grandkids had this issue. How do you get the kiddos out of the chicken McNuggets only phase? That's a good question. Um, you know, there's lots of, lots of ways. Like some of the things we talked about. Our oldest grandkids, uh, sometimes even now they're a little, I don't want to say fussy, but they're particular. Bless you. Bless you, Maxwell. Um, like... Things that are rich and heavy, they don't like, like mac and cheese, they're, they're hot and cold on because it's so rich and, and, and full of mouthfeel. And, uh, they have some uh, texture issues, I think. But what we found, and, and as they've gotten older and their palates are changing, you know, they're changing too, and like our son does, we just try things, cook differently. So if your kids are just stuck on chicken McNuggets, give them a break or cook chicken a little differently. Start to introduce it. A little differently. Uh, 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 uh. Well, you go deal with that. I'll, I'll deal with it. Now we have a kitty fight about to happen. Go. Okay. Get up there. Yeah, the joys of having five cats. It's just like kids. He's touching me. No, he's not. I'm not touching him. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Growing up, I had my grandmother on my right, my dad on my left. Had to clear my plate before leaving the table. Found as a teenager that food tastes so much better hot rather than cold. <laughs> so Dixie, I guess you were one of those kids that would stubbornly sit there and sit there until everything got cold and yeah. So my big sister, uh, you know, like most kids have that one kryptonite thing. Um, and asparagus was one of mine growing up. And 
She gave me some advice once. I was really just having a bad night, and I don't even remember how old I was, but I was. I knew asparagus was coming for dinner, and it's like, oh, and I was fussing about it. And she said, "Just relax. My mom puts it on your plate, and we start dinner. Eat it first. Just eat it first, really fast. Gobble it down, and then you can relax, and you can enjoy the rest of dinner. And no one will yell at you, and they'll be all happy because you ate the damn asparagus. And well, that worked." To a point, because uh, that's what I did. I ate the asparagus. I ate it all up really fast, and then I'm eating my dinner. And my mom goes, "Oh, you ate the asparagus. That's great. You must like it. Here's some more." I'm like, "Thanks." I was like, "No, I'm I'm good." But I also learned with my parents, especially my mother, if you didn't like something that she cooked, if you made a fuss about it, you were going to eat it. But if you were polite. No thanks, mom. I've had enough. I really don't care for it, and that was okay. I'm Shannon, I only eat organic foods, nothing artificial, no preservatives. Well, that's that's fine. That's great. Um, probably healthier for you in a lot of ways, especially the no preservatives. But you know, gotta watch some of those prepared foods too because they're full of sodium and sugar and stuff. So you gotta balance all that out. Yanira, I'm not picky at all. I eat everything. That's awesome. That's what I like to hear. That is awesome.、Uh, I need a break for a moment. I need a sip of. <clears throat> so you can think about this question while you sip. Is there anything you won't eat from Mary? Okay, I will admit I'm not a picky eater at all. I'm very adventurous. We go to、uh, restaurants of different cultures, and I've eaten some pretty wild things and enjoyed them. You know, blowfish, horse. Donkey,、um, bear. We had bear. It.、Um, a couple of things I I I won't eat, but I I want to fix. I want to start eating them and cooking with them. I just have to get the courage to try it. The first thing is bluefish. It's a trigger for me. We had a lot of it growing up. It stunk up the house. It looks terrible. It just there are too many bad memories, and sometimes I'll see it at the fishmonger. And it, it just ugh, makes my skin crawl.、Um, the other thing is rutabagas or those big wax turnips, and it's the same thing. It was the smell of them cooking. To me, they're bitter and sulfury. My mother would only boil them and then add, you know, like for ten of them, she'd make a big batch every Thanksgiving and put like a teaspoon of sugar. She'd, oh well, this will sweeten it up, and then she'd say how sweet they are, and not so much.、Uh, so those are two things I will probably. Cook the rutabagas before I ever cook bluefish.、Um, it's just not going to happen. But I wouldn't call that being a picky eater. That's just something I don't care for. My father-in-law will not eat cabbage to this day.、It、comes from days as a POW during World War II. Well, you know that's funny. My dad was like that with salmon. He would not eat salmon. And when he was growing up、uh, in the 30s and 40s,、uh, they there was a while when they didn't have a lot of money. But one thing that his mother could afford was canned salmon. But she apparently was not a good cook. I, I never knew her, but apparently she was not a cook. And so dinner for he and his brothers, she would just take a can of salmon, open it up, plop it on a plate, and here. And he and his brother would—that would all was all they had.、Uh, so he he would never eat like salmon anything. No salmon cakes. Maybe fresh salmon, but not not even canned salmon. Slanking food doesn't make you fussy eater. It's when it's wide ranging and never ends. Well, and you know that's true to a point. I I, I would agree with that. So uh, mostly, uh, yeah. If you just don't like one or two things, it just means you don't like one or two things. But if you ban all green vegetables or all, you know, fish or something, then it's a little more on the other side of this pendulum. We come from a family of eight kids. You like and eat everything. Yeah, well, we had five, and yeah, we did. We you had to eat everything. There was no. It was not. My mother was not a short order cook. It was not a diner. This is what we have. Ooh, this next one scares me a little. Why? How about drinking yak butter tea?、Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Do you know what that is, dear? Nope. Okay. One would assume it was made with yak butter, so I know. 
Um, I feel like I need to Google that, Hank. <laughs> Maybe that'll be our next cocktail episode. <laughs> Today on Let's Celebrate TV, we're going to make yak butter tea. That'll be in the, the negative views. All right, why don't you take a little break for a second? Yes, please. I need some water. There you go. All right, normally at this time, I like to feature a small YouTube cooking channel because small channels have to work hard. We know we're there. By the way, we're only 20 people away from 4,000. So take a second and hit that like button today. And that subscribe button. Um, and if you should already be a subscriber, hit it anyway, and that'll help. But we're asking if you've got a favorite cooking channel or a favorite house channel, not so much I'm fixing things or adventures, but related to the kitchen of cooking, and you'd like us to feature them, send it to us. Um, let me know in the, oops, let me get my right screen on here. Uh, we are right here. Let me know either down in the uh, chat for this show or send me an email to info at Let's Celebrate TV or leave it in our Facebook group, the name of some small cooking channels. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and go out there and take a look and subscribe to them and watch them a little bit. It takes me a little while because I don't necessarily um, recommend a channel just because they're small. I like to see what their point of view is and if their point of view is not only not necessarily similar to our own, but what I think our audience would enjoy. Plus, I have to get their permission, and that takes some time. So the channel I was going to feature this week had not gotten back to me and given me permission, so I don't want to cross that line. So again, if you know a small cooking channel, or you have a favorite cooking channel, let us know. Send it to us at Info Let's Celebrate. Put it on the Facebook. Put it down below in the comment section. And mm -hmm. it's back to you. Yay! Back to me, Bob. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. Here's something. Self-promotion. Okay, I'm good with that. Went out today for sparkling wine and cognac to try that French 125 cocktail you just posted. Oh, that's excellent, Jolene. Thank you. I thought about that today, but we've had so much champagne lately, and I don't want to go through our reserves, and we're starting to get low. So we, we need to have a... <clears throat> trip out to Long Island soon, which we do. We have a pickup that we have to go out to Old Fields. Yak butter tea. Sounds so strange that I will try it. All right, Kevin, is that a challenge? It's a traditional Tibetan drink. Okay, that, I think I did know that, but I don't know what it's made of. So now I'm going to have to look that up. I probably would try it. I probably absolutely would. Because, you know, I figure, like... When I've, I've been to other places and had other foods, people, people exist on it. People eat it. So other than perhaps insects, like I'm not sure I want to try like fried crickets or anything, but, um, you know, people exist on it. They eat it. That's why I ate donkey. Okay, whatever. Horse. Sure. People eat it. It's edible. Part of their culture. All right, so this question's good because it's timely and because of what we had. Oh, from Amy, what did you do for dinner last night? Well, probably not something that someone who is a fussy eater would like. We went out to a Moroccan restaurant uh, in Philadelphia called Marrakesh, and it's been there for over 40 years. And it's a neat place. It's, it's authentic as you can get. Uh, and we have a friend who lived in uh, Morocco for a long time, and she said when she's been there that it's just like being in Morocco. Um, it's a great place. It's in Philadelphia. And it's a whole experience of it. Like when you go in, you're not just going to a restaurant, you're going into their home, into their living room. Um, and it's a set menu of multiple courses. Uh, there's uh, salads and lamb and chicken and kebabs and couscous. There's this very interesting pie that's the second course. It's made with chicken and scrambled eggs and nuts and it's in phyllo dough and then it has cinnamon and sugar on it so you have all these flavors you might think you know but they're together in a weird way that is somehow addicting but it's one of those things that i can see a picky eater not enjoying the best thing is you eat everything with your hands uh, or with like pita bread um, so it's quite the experience you sit on couches you are yep. given 
bath towels to put over your they legs. Bring out the, uh, they bring out rose water to wash your hands. They samovar where they wash your hands in rose, rose water. water. It's a very um, interesting yeah. experience. But if you have not tasted different foods, you could look at it and right. go, hmm. Yeah, like the first course is a trio of salads. There's one that's these pickled carrots. There's one that's cucumbers and peppers and tomatoes. And then there's a warm one that is eggplant with to in a tomato sauce. It has all these Moroccan spices and it's delicious. It doesn't look very appetizing. It looks like just a pile of whatever. Uh, but so I could see someone going like, ugh, but it's delicious. So that was our dinner last night. And why did we go to dinner last night? Well, we went there because uh, Phil and Kevin worked very hard yesterday installing a dishwasher down here in the basement uh, on the other side of the room next to the bar. So now when I'm cooking and demonstrating down here, I just have to walk over there. When we have a big party, all the glasses just right over there to get washed. Um, so they worked hard on that all day. So we, we were actually supposed to go out there with friends of ours last night and they couldn't make it. So Kevin was here and we said, call your wife, get a babysitter. We're going out to dinner. So they did. We had a good time. All right. Check out Rachel Cooks. I'm going to write Rachel that Rachel Cooks with love. I don't have a pen to write down for I you. got it. Okay. You're, Thank you, Teresa. We will. Your producer has got it. Okay. What about my director and tech guy? Does he have it too? No, 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 no. He's still hungry. Oh, well. Is he going to want a second cocktail? Oh, okay. Well, I'm not making it right now. Oh, well then what'd you bother with that? <laughs> because I want to tease you. From Dan, if I send you some recipes, will you feature them? Send them to me and I will be happy to test them out. And if it's something that I think our audience would like, absolutely I'll feature them. Mm -hmm. I have to test and vet all of, the rest, all of the recipes that we get. We've had a couple of uh, guest stars that came in and did recipes and uh, <clears throat> it was a little scary. So, but yeah, send them to me, absolutely. Send them to info at letscelebrate.tv. Um, post them on Facebook, send them to me, to Let's Celebrate as a Facebook message, absolutely send them, right? Is it info at, can you put that up? Yep. Yeah, send me your recipes from info at letscelebrate.tv. And if there's a story to go behind it, that's even better. You know, like, this was my great-grandmother's whatever recipe, and it's our family tradition, we have it, whatever. Or, I just made this up today, try it. You can also get us through the contact form on our website. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is an interesting question. What's that? I'm not sure, I, don't, I definitely don't know the answer to this. At what age did your kids grow out of the sweet stage? We know Connor's out of the sweet stage. I'm not sure what that means. Everything has to be sweet. Candies, I cakes, food. I don't remember us having that because we were pretty strict with Kevin. Like, no, you're not eating cake all the time. Did our other, did the grandkids go through that? Kevin? Emily, did Kenzie go through a sweet stage where everything had to be cookies and candies and sweet, or has she not gotten there yet? I don't, I don't know that, the answer to that either. That, that's a good question. Thank you. I, I don't know it. I would say if they did, it was probably pretty early. Really, we're lucky that none of our kids or grandkids are what I would call a true fussy eater. Um, okay, so more on your... Uh... Tea is made from the milk of a domestic yak. Okay. It's probably, I'm guessing, fermented or something. I would try it. I absolutely would. Absolutely. Okay, Jack's got a good one here. Do you guys do pastries too? Um, well, define pastries. I am not a baker. Uh, so am I going to make croissants from scratch for you? Probably not. But do I make desserts occasionally? You know, uh, in fact, we have a, a cake That's Tuesday's recipe, episode coming up. Uh, coming up. So yeah, we do. We do some cakes and desserts and things. Uh, I've, I've got a couple Danish recipes I'm looking as as far as like you know like cheese Danish and prune Danish. Uh, but I, I am not a baker in any sense of the word. I'm not a, a pastry maker. So 
Actually, Probably not unless I can find a shortcut or an easy way to do it. Actually, our dessert recipes that we have now are all mostly ones that were done by other channels that we, with well, permission, have updated them not, a little bit. Not quite. Not quite. The chocolate mousse is my own. The pumpkin mousse is my own. Uh, I think that traditional Scottish shortbread might be my own. <laughs> Sorry guys, Jack missed the pear and blue cheese tart. So make it for him. Yeah, and that's okay. And you know, those were a perfect example of I found a, a shortcut in the little cool can't wait. All right, Jack, a uh, little pre-made pastry cups that are made out of phyllo dough. Now I use a lot of phyllo in my cooking. Careful, but... kitty. Mackenzie is still in it, but she has to eat all of her dinner before she can have sweets. I got you, okay. That's funny, as, as often as she's here, Connor's out, Emily can't get enough, and I don't know I, on the other two. I know Connor, because okay. he, all he ever drinks now is water. Even. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Michelle made him eat, drink a glass of milk at Christmas, and he was like, ugh, I don't like the way it coats my mouth. I do love your fruit tart. Yes, and you know, Kevin, I haven't made one of those in so long, and we keep saying we want to do an episode for but it, we... but it's... It's, it's very challenging to do in our format in 10 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. it may be a little bit more fussy and too much work for most of our audience. So we well, may save that for a live stream. Yeah. I don't know that's fussy. It's time consuming. It's time consuming. So, yeah, I don't know that we could get it into our 10 to a minute, 10 to 11 minute format, but maybe on a live stream. Could do a live stream. Um, well, if we did a lot of B roll, we could do it in a regular episode. I mean, what's the crust? Crust is my Scottish shortbread, right? A little modified. So maybe. And I haven't made one in a long time, Kevin. Maybe I need to, I need a reason to make one. Any more winery trips coming up, Milo? Well, uh, hopefully soon, because I know we have a pickup this month at the Old Fields. Um, I just went to one of our favorites here in New Jersey, Sharrett Winery, yesterday, and I, I might have brought home a case of wine in addition to our regular pick wine up. club pickup. Uh, but yeah, well, we have to get out, out to Long Island and do some winery trips. I'll reiterate that we spend stupid amounts of money on wine. Yeah. Yes, we do. It's what else you got, dear? Hold on. Because I know the clock is ticking, but I've gone through my things. Mackenzie would like the fruit tart. Oh, I'm sure she would. I'm sure. I mean, that's all the end for my pre-types. And let me just jump while you uh, song and dance. Let me check Facebook one Jazz more hands. time. <laughs> all right, so why don't you talk about what's coming up? Uh, okay, I was just going to say that. Uh, so what's coming up? So hopefully today, if not today, tomorrow night, we're going to film uh, a lime cake that the recipe was inspired by our good friend and fellow YouTuber, Karen in the Kitchen, right? In the Kitchen with Karen. In the Kitchen with Karen. And she made a lemon version of brownies that she called lemonies. And I made them and it was like, oh, oh my God, mind blown. But I couldn't have them in my house because they were addictive and just, yeah. For two diabetics, you don't even want to know. <laughs> when we ate a whole pan of them in one night, in one sitting. Yeah, it was ugly the next day. Uh, but then we started thinking, could we do this with lime? So that, Phil suggested that. And then I started thinking, hmm, if not as a brownie format, maybe a bunt cake. And I started thinking about little ways to tweak it. So that's what we're going to make for you. Um, it's bright and fresh and tart and just as addicting as Karen's uh, limeys. Some other things coming up, I think we're talking about, uh, from a request from some of our viewers, uh, we're going to be talking more about wines, and I think our next live stream will be all about wines and wine pairings, and box wine is okay. Don't let anyone shame you with box wine. I have several great recipes of blue cheese, such as an Alfredo style sauce, but there's no way to get your daughter to eat blue cheese, our daughter to eat blue cheese. <laughs> Well, can... I love blue cheese, Paul. That is my all-time favorite. So why don't you share some of those and I can make them here because I, I'm always 
anytime I can put blue cheese in a recipe, I am or there. Or you could come down here and we could do it as a live stream That's together great. down or here. Or as a guest star episode, come, come absolutely. Come down to Philly, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll go out. And Spend a weekend here and you can be a guest star. Just saying. You and Jack. Yep. We've had a number of guest stars. But what else is coming up? So we have, is this the same lime cake I tried yesterday? It was really good. Yes, Kevin, it's the same lime cake you tried yesterday. That's uh, because we, uh, you know, test our recipes on everybody. Yeah, I think that was test number four or five. I don't five. know. I lost track. Yeah, it's a really simple cake to make, so I'm able to, like when I was making pasta, uh, I finish my work day, I come downstairs, I make a lime cake. Um, yeah. Anyway, what else do we have coming up? <laughs> um, yeah, I have some, I, I'm planning a party in March. So, uh, and what I'm doing is, the things I'm planning are gonna be future episodes. Uh, and then the people who get to come to dinner are gonna get all new stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, a new Shepherd's Pie, version of Shepherd's Pie coming up. There are a couple of new cocktails in the works. Uh, more basic skills, like how to do a Supreme, uh, things like that. And our next live stream will be starting wine. Yeah. Yeah. All about wine. Whining about wine. Yeah, wine 101. Yeah. So we're going to talk about some of the myths of wine, like, you know, good wine is only expensive, and you can only have, you know, red wine with this and white wine with that, and blah, 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 blah. Um, so we'll talk about all that the next time. And we're going to be drinking a lot of wine, having a lot of wines out. So... You know, it might be fun because I'll probably be doing this by the time it's over. So that might okay. be a good good one for a studio audience. To oh, yeah. We can get a studio audience. That would be good to do a tasting. Yeah. That would be fun. Live wine tasting. All right. Well, chat is kind of quiet. Facebook got really quiet and we got done early. So... We have four minutes. What do you got? Anything, dear? I got nothing. Oh, now I get the email. Oh, well, a little late. About what? I just got the email for permission to feature the channel I was going to feature. Well, who was it? You can do it real quick right now. Uh, it'll take me too long. Oh. All right. That's Sorry. All right. We'll do it for next week. Next time. Anyway, so, yeah, so um, if you're a picky eater, if you're a fussy eater, try some of our tips. Try something new. You never know. You might like it. I want a ticket for the live audience. Okay, you live two miles away, and Bring so wine. all you have to do is you and your wife and your daughter have to come over and sit over there on the couch. You know you're always welcome. You know how to get in the house even if you weren't welcome, so it's fine. So just come over. I want beer, just saying. Yeah. Um, I was going to say something, and now you distracted me. Uh, Kevin, you distracted me. I don't remember what I was going to say now. That's annoying. Hmm. You remember what I was going to say, don't you? Really? Well, you know, it could happen. Uh, so, and also, uh, guys, what do you want to see us do? Um, you know, we are, I am considering, and I really would like your feedback on this, I am considering starting a new sub-series, Gotta Run Great Show. Thanks, Hank. Take care. I... I feel like we've been doing this for enough years that we've guided people along. We, we've taught them a lot of basics. We've broken down a lot of entertaining. So I am going to do, we're going to do some more episodes on how to plan a party and, and get ready for a party and entertaining. But I feel like I want to do some more complicated, fancier dishes. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, I, I want to try and do things that you may think are super, super fancy, but We've been holding back because you might be a little scary of them. So let me know what you think and what you'd like to see. If you'd, li if you'd like something a little more challenging, perhaps. Something with more than five ingredients or, you know, more than just a couple steps. Anything else, dear? No more comments, no, questions? No more comments. Yes, we could end a minute early and give these fine people a whole minute back of their lives because it's 429 according to my watch. Mm -hmm. All right, and Kevin. This hour goes so fast. <laughs> and I always think, like, what am I going to talk about? Keg in two days, 
beer coming. Okay. Well, that's because we bought him a kegerator yeah. for his extended birthday and helping us with all the work around here. Yeah, it was a lot of work yesterday to put in this dishwasher. We had to rip out cabinetry, support the big granite countertop, and we had to add a new pump and because we're down below grade. <laughs> all right, Jack, thanks. And, you know, yeah, we're going to reach out to you and Paul, and, and we're going to have to work out a weekend for you guys to come down and be on the show. All right, so get back to the right screen. Yes, back to us. We will see you in two weeks. Yep. And we'll do the basics of wine, Wine 101. I'm not sure what we'll title it, but it'll be ready. We'll figure it out. And again, if you know any small uh, YouTube cooking channels that we should take a look yep. at, send it to us, and we'll start up a new library. And tell your friends to check us out and, and tell them to subscribe because we're so close to 4,000. And that's right. about it. Yep. And we will see you later. All right. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>